All right, back in the basement again today to talk about this Rep AB 5200 bench. I've owned it for about a year now and it is a fantastic bench, but it's not perfect by any means. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about it and also briefly compare it to some of the other adjustables that I own. Let's get to it. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is this as a flat bench. So even though this is adjustable and it has a lot of different angles you can do it, let's start at where everything starts on this bench, which is completely flat. And a lot of people wanna get an adjustable bench to serve the purpose of being a flat bench replacement and also having that adjustability feature. Truth be told, a flat bench or dedicated flat bench that doesn't adjust is going to be better in a lot of ways but this is still great at being a flat bench, which is a good trade-off because oftentimes with adjustability, you typically lose some of the benefits of having a flat bench. And one of the biggest things people look to call out is the gap itself. Rep Fitness has a zero gap version. I don't think that's necessary here because I find this gap is very minimal. It's two inches or less depending on where the pad sits and where you really wanna measure. And because the upper pad length on here is longer than most other benches I've dealt with at about 41 and a half inches and maybe even a little bit more, you typically, no matter where you set up, can still get some contact points where the gap is never going to play a role. If you put your butt here on the lower pad, the small of your back will be right here, no problem. Some smaller people could even put their butts here on the upper pad and again, have plenty of room in order to bench. So that goes a long way in making this a very good bench press. And even though I have my Rogue adjustable 2.0, which is a zero gap, I haven't found this gap here to be any issue whatsoever. All right, so let's be honest, we can overlook the gap in a lot of cases. That's not all that means to be a good flat bench. One of the things I also like is how high this bench is or how high it's not. So from my measurement from the floor to the top of the pad, I get 17 and a half inches, which for me is a very good height, right around what I wanna see in competition. And I find setting up on this is a breeze. The interesting thing here for me is when I take a look at Rep's website, it actually lists it as 18 inches, which it definitely is not 18 inches. Even though I've had this for a year, the pad hasn't compressed a full half an inch and it's always been around 17 and a half inches. They also do list a tolerance on their bench of plus or minus 3%. So maybe that applies to some of the specs that I'm going over with you. But otherwise, most of the specs from what I measure on my bench to what's listed on their website lines up pretty well. The other thing that I like about this bench is the width of the overall pad and the bench in general. So it is a 12 inch pad across on the upper pad. The bottom pad measures at 12 inch and then kind of tapers off as it goes towards the front. But 12 inches for me, competition spec as well. Setting up on this is much nicer than on my Rogue Adjustable 2.0, which only has around 11 inch width. So definitely feel a little bit better digging your shoulders and scapula in here. I will say that Rep also offers uh, an adapted 12 inch fat pad if you wanna go that route, if you really wanna get that feel. But if you compete in powerlifting, I do think you should stick with the actual 12 inch pad itself. So speaking of the pad, this is probably my favorite part when it comes to flat benching on the AB5200. The pad is awesome. It is supple, it compresses really well, so when you're trying to dig your shoulder blades in and set up for a bench press, this allows you to do so very well, especially when you combine that with the actual upholstery used here, which is their grippy material, which they also use on some of their other products that they sell, including their benches and leg roller attachments. I like this material a lot. Now, in some of the previous videos I've done on similar benches, I mentioned I thought the material was the same, but after taking some macro shots of the upholstery itself, the rep bench is different than all the other ones. And again, mix that in with the padding that compresses a little bit more than normal, I think this is a winner and probably one of the reasons that when you watch my videos of me training, I typically am benching in my rep rack because again, I like this bench so much for flat bench pressing. All right, next let's talk about the adjustability and the versatility of this bench. I really like the fact that it has adjustability in six different points here, going anywhere from 15 degrees up to 85 degrees in 15 degree increments. And how do I know that? Well, the numbers are laser cut right here on the base of the unit and the bottom tray so you can know exactly how you're adjusting it, which I really like. It makes it really convenient and it's a nice touch that they didn't have to do. In fact, my Rogue Bench doesn't have that and the Rogue Bench typically is more expensive at the end of the day. As far as the bottom pad goes, there's three adjustable points. There's flat and different levels of incline. And no matter what you're trying to do from an adjustability standpoint, I think you'll be able to find a nice range of motion here on this bench. Again, the highest it goes is 85 degrees, which I think is fine. Not a lot of people need a true 90 degree angle bench, especially if you're doing things like pressing, where again, people tend to retract their shoulder blades some, stick out their chest, and even put their head back as they come down, either with a barbell or a dumbbell. 
well. So 85 degrees is fine here. Now, one of the things I do want to call out, though, this is not a decline bench. There are other benches out there that rep cells and competition cells that do allow that feature. But truth be told, I don't think I'd use that that often with my own setup and own training anyways. But if you're looking for something that can decline, this 5200 does not do it. Now this bench is built pretty nice overall, and I'll talk about what I don't like in a minute, but I do say I really like the front foot plate on here. Number one, it's that tripod design that I've talked about in a lot of my other bench videos, which I find is really good for setting up with bench. It has a nice steel handle right here. There's no knurling on it. It would be a nice touch if they did, but it's nice, big, wide, easy to grip, and this thing is very easy to move around. You do also see some big rubber feet on the front, which means that this is going to be really stable, and you have some rubber feet on the bottom as well to help it kind of grip no matter what kind of surface you're doing. Now, obviously, this is a pretty nice angle, right? I got the bench up in the air, and that's also one of the areas where the versatility comes into play because this actually has a stand where you can put this up and tuck it away on the side when not in use. Now, truth be told, I never use this feature on any bench. It's not a selling point for me. I have enough room here in my gym where I can just roll the bench away and I don't have to worry about putting it away. But if you're training in a garage or even a basement that you don't have a ton of extra space on, this might come in really handy as you could simply roll up the bench and tuck it in a corner while you utilize the rest of your space. Now on the other side of this, I did mention you have the rubber feet here to help with grip no matter what kind of surface you're training on. It does also include some two very hard wheels. I don't know what the material is, but these roll great on stall mats. The bench itself weighs around 120 so pounds. So even though it's heavy, you would never know because the wheels take care of that. Now, it doesn't have a kickstand on the bottom, so this isn't as an ideal of a shot angle for me and it doesn't really look that great. So I'm gonna put this bench back up. All right, so while I got you down here and before I flip the bench up, I want to call out two other things that I like about this bench. Number one, a nice touch is the Rep Laser Cut Engraved logo right here. Looks really sharp and it is actually really sharp, so don't play around with it too much. But again, high-end finish here where a lot of other companies tend to use stickers. And also here on the adjustment handles, which I like to call nubs because they're only about two inches in length. They don't get in the way too much. And I find that these shorter nubs are more ideal when you're doing things like incline dumbbell rows. I don't tend to hit these as much as I do on my Rogue Adjustable 2.0. So like I said, I like this bench a lot. There's a lot of things it has going for it. And even though it's a solid bench, that's one of the issues that I have with it is the fact that it could be a lot more solid and a very simple fix on rep standpoint if they go ahead and decide to do it. At the time of this video, I don't believe they had. And it really comes down to the adjustability system of the hooks and ladders. It works really well, as I mentioned already, a lot of great adjustability, but as you'll notice, there's a lot of extra room here where the bars attach to the hooks themselves, which leads to this 120 pound bench not feeling as stable as it likely should and it all comes down to missing just some rubber washers. Now, my man Marcus over at Twisted Barbell made a video about how he went out and bought the supplies to do this. I think it cost him like six bucks and looked like a pretty simple fix. I'll link that video in the description box below. And I think if you own this bench and you have this problem and you find that it's maybe not as solid as you thought it would be, this is a must do modification that you have to do. Otherwise, this bench is really good, but again, I think that small little fix, which should be an easy thing to do on reps part, really needs to be done to make this bench truly outstanding. All right, so let's do some quick comparisons. This isn't the whole point of the video. I have a dedicated review on this bench. I will have a dedicated review on this one coming up shortly. But on my right, I have the Rogue Adjustable 2.0, and on my left, I have the GetRx FID AB-2, or Get Prescribed Fit Ab 2, whatever you wanna call it. So let's start with the Rogue. I've owned this the longest at six years. This thing is super heavy duty, right? Six years old, still looks like new. I use it all the time. But case in point of how sturdy this is compared to the 5200, let's do a very scientific shake test. Example A, not going anywhere. Example B, oh, I'm just gonna use a finger. Big difference between these two, even though the weight difference isn't as significant. So this one feels super solid. And speaking of super solid, the pad on this is like benching on concrete. So that might be a good or bad thing depending on what you're looking at. It's great if you're looking at longevity wise. This pad, like I said, I've had it for six years and it's still in fantastic shape. Also, if you're using this for other things outside of just pressing movements, let's say you wanna use this for step ups or sitting on or anything where you're gonna be pushing something down into it, this isn't going to have much give and it's going to be super stable. 
versus the rep pad, which is great for benching because again, it's a very sticky pad, which has a lot of give to it to allow you to dig in. Not the best for things like step ups because I honestly feel like I'm gonna fall off or roll my ankle in some instances. The Rogue back pad is also significantly shorter by about four inches. It does have a zero gap up front, so that is a little bit of a push in my opinion, but the adjustability on this is nowhere near as good as what you get with the 5200. Case in point, on the back, you have four positions on the Rogue, six positions on the Rep. On the front, two positions on the Rogue, Rep has three positions. The Rep also has that kickstand for putting it away easily. The Rogue does have that now as an add-on feature, but it costs more money, and the Rogue is already the most expensive at the end of the day, typically when you factor in things like shipping and tax. Because this thing is so beefy and it ships fully assembled, it usually has to go freight, so you're looking at like at least $100 to $200 in some instances just for shipping. Now, let's move on to over here, the GetRx version, and I'm gonna be completely honest, this is a clone of this for sure, this came out first, this came out recently, and even though they cloned it, they did try to change it some, which I can respect and appreciate. So the biggest differences you're gonna notice with this is this adds a couple of new features that the rep doesn't have. Namely, number one, in addition to the six back positions, it has one other position up front, which is going to allow you to do a decline work. And for that, it also has this leg roller attachment so you can hook your feet in, whether you're doing decline pressing or ab work, whatever the case may be. Just know that the leg roller attachment does cost extra at around $90. The two benches are similarly priced otherwise, but this starts to put it into a higher category. They also have on a dumbbell holder adder, so if you're doing things like incline dumbbell work or maybe you wanna get fancy and try to figure out a way to do incline barbell rows with this, you can, but those are add-on costs and significantly put this in a much better price range whereas Rep does have benches that offer those features, or some of them at least, but again, they're in a different price range overall. Now, when it comes to the padding, however, this pad is much more firm. You may or may not like that. So I do think the Rep pad is better and better for benching, but if you're using this for other activities, like I mentioned with the Rogue, this one would probably be better. This bench already has taken the step two to fix the issue with the hook and ladder system where it's adding in those rubber washers. So you're not getting as much sway side to side. But again, based off of the way that this is built, you do still have some, but it's not as significant in my opinion. It's more muted. And again, the Rogue is the most solid overall. All right, so at the end of the day, like I said, the Rep AB5200 is a very good bench with a couple of downfalls which can easily be addressed by either Rep themselves or even you if you wanna go and take that initiative. But I do think there's good value here. And when you take a look at it versus some of the other similar benches, both that I've shown and that are on the market, the Rep bench usually comes in as the best value. List price is 469 versus the GetRx version, which is 489 and then the Rogue version, which is 545. Now, all three of these benches, like I mentioned, do have some add-ons. I didn't get too into the ones that Rep offer, mainly just being the spotter deck that can go on back. But again, you wanna take that into consideration of what you want out of a bench. I do think for regular bench pressing and maybe even dumbbell work, flat, I think the Rep one wins hands down and the adjustability issues, like I said, can be somewhat addressed, but all these benches are great, the Rep included, and after shipping and tax, it tends to be one of the cheapest ones that I've found that offer the feature set that it does at the quality it does, and is probably one of the reasons why I usually give it a very high recommendation if someone asks, and hopefully you got able to kind of get that through this video. Now, if you have any other questions or comments about it, leave it in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get to you then, but in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.